What's that smell? Oh, uh, I'm cooking up some high stakes for my character. Ooh, filet mignon? What? Nor, come on, it's a plot device. Aww. Not actual steaks. Aren't you the writer? I'm supposed to be the dumb one here. I'm hungry. Hey guys, Noor here, and today we're talking about how to write a plot with high stakes. But before we get started, I just want to mention that there are two weeks left to pre-order my book and enter in my giveaway to win a signed hardback before it comes out on October 1st, but more on that at the end of the video. A plot with high stakes can suck us inside a story and make us want to keep reading. We want to know if our favorite characters will survive, and if they find out who the bad person is, and if they end up solving the crisis at hand. Now, a great way to make your stakes high is by making some of them personal. For instance, the conflict is a big stake in your story. And let's say there's a comet heading toward your character's town and it can kill many people. Now, that could be the big conflict, but while your character is worried about survival, there's nothing personal at stake here. People are evacuating and all should be well. Your character might help with the evacuation, but that's about where the story ends. On the other hand, if you add a more personal stake such as your main character hiding their fugitive boyfriend in their house and can't leave town or else they'll be caught and put back in jail for a crime they never committed, then things get more suspenseful. How will your characters survive and stay unnoticed? How will they escape town while the FBI searches all the evacuating cars? I don't know, you figure that out. Point is, personal stakes add emotion and a reason for the reader to feel invested in our characters. They now worry about a person instead of a whole group that they have no connection to. Of course, big stakes that aren't always personal are just as crucial to the story. For example, while evacuating, someone has a stroke and causes an accident on the road, which leads to traffic, which leads to blocking off the one exit that everyone needs to go through. So make sure you create a balance between big stakes and personal stakes. Another way to create high stakes in your plot is by adding consequences to your character's actions and decisions. After all, they're not perfect. Even if they did something out of good intentions, the consequences aren't always good. Your character hiding her boyfriend could delay people from evacuating on time. It could be as simple as that. Or maybe the consequence could be something bad happening to our main character. She does something good, and as a result, a terrible chain reaction ensues. Of course, not every action will lead to bad consequences, just like not every action will lead to good consequences. Keep the reader on their toes by switching things up here and there. Also, make sure you add tension and pace the story. An easy way you can do that is by keeping sentences short to speed up the pace. Fill your scenes with action, add more dialogue than exposition, and keep your risks high, which goes back to our personal stakes. Shorter sentences packed with purposeful details make us feel the anxiety of the scene, which is a must. Here's an example of short sentences in a fast-paced scene. Fissures in the ground spread out. A crack ran past me until the surface split apart. Lava bubbled underneath me. Jump left, jump right. I dove left, the lava nearly eating me whole. But as you can see, the fast-paced scene is generally full of short sentences that deliver impact quickly. They are full of visuals and other sensory details. Speaking of sensory details, the five senses are a great way to add tension since they immerse the reader right in the scene. Another great way to make your stakes high is by adding a ticking time bomb element. It doesn't have to be a literal ticking time bomb. It could be an impending comet about to crash down any minute, or a team of officers who are about to storm the house. And if you're writing in third-person omniscient, you could have your narrator inform your reader about this ticking time bomb element without the characters knowing about it. This keeps tension high because we as readers know what's coming and we want to shout at the characters and we just don't know if they'll make it. And my last tip for making your stakes high is simply making sure that every scene moves the story forward. Every scene should have a purpose. Either your characters are making decisions, taking actions, or learning something new about each other or their circumstances. Pointless filler, whether through dialogue or exposition, don't really create high stakes. Actually, they just bore readers. So 
If you want your readers to fall asleep, or worse yet, to use your book as toilet paper, then by all means, go ahead, add unnecessary filler to the story. Now, what counts as filler? Be sure to check out my video on the five types of fluff to cut from your story to learn more, and I'll leave it in the card here. So those are all my tips for you. Let me know in the comments. What do you enjoy most about stories with high stakes? I'd love to know. All right, on to the giveaway. Three lucky winners will receive signed hardbacks of my upcoming novel, Divinity Falling, which comes out on October 1st. Now, there are two weeks left to enter in this giveaway, and all you have to do is pre-order a copy, screenshot your receipt, and send it in the giveaway form linked in the description below. It could be ebook, paperback, or hardback. Doesn't matter. And all those who enter in this giveaway will receive the first five chapters of Divinity Falling in advance before anyone else. And I will be giving out other book related goodies at the end of the giveaway to those who entered. And thank you so much for those who already pre ordered a copy and entered in the giveaway. And good luck! And don't forget to follow me on social media for updates and just to see what I'm up to. And remember, North for President!